In this video, I'll be talking about the handful of paintings I've done of my friend Kimberly, focusing on the two portraits I did of her in 2019. After months of hemming and hawing, I decided once again to attempt to get into the Kingston Prize for Portraiture. Uh, I tried previously with a self-portrait, this portrait of George M. Law, this portrait of George Meanwell, and a portrait of Kelsey McNulty. By the end of January 2019, I decided to reach out to an old friend and ask her if she'd be my subject for what could very well be my last attempt to get into the Kingston Prize, and she happily agreed. I've known Kimberly since high school, right around the time when I started painting in watercolors in 1988, and I have painted her several times in watercolor, and I thought it would be appropriate to use her as the model for this one final attempt to get into this exhibition. Uh, in my initial sketch for this portrait, I had an owl perched on her arm, and it was a sort of spontaneous idea, but it was easy enough to reverse engineer this concept and discover that it was ultimately very appropriate. Owls represent wisdom, and that was one of Kimberly's traits I thought would be best to feature in this portrait of her. Since neither of us have an actual owl, I composed the picture in Photoshop using a great horned owl from a Google search. And then one element I completely forgot about when compositing this image in Photoshop was the floating empty picture frame and the little thumbnail. Uh, it's interesting, uh, I like the idea that it harkens back to The Fiercest Calm, one of my earlier paintings, but I'm glad I didn't use it because I like the radiating lines in the final portrait. I like the intersecting shapes better than the empty picture frame. Because of my peculiar paint application, there are always areas throughout my paintings where the coverage isn't perfectly solid and the surface underneath shows through a bit. So I use orange acrylic as a ground color rather than having the white of the primed canvas show through. I also like laying down some dark colors to give some interest and depth to the light colors that will be painted over top. It adds variety and interest to the orange ground. I haven't had the opportunity to paint much leather. The most was probably the boots in my Dance Partner series from my World War I project in 2014. One of my favorite textures and materials to paint in watercolors is denim, and with this painting I discovered I really like painting leather in oils. Uh, the exciting challenge is always to see if I can paint these textures convincingly. I wanted the figure to stand out, so I wanted the background to be abstract, but still evocative of ground and sky via the colors that I used. I did a sketch to remind myself to add some Alphonse Mucha inspired curls to the ends of Kim's hair, and then I forgot about it for a long time. But then I remembered, and I'm glad I did. Also, at this stage, I lighten the blue areas in that triangular section coming from her light, from her left eye. Uh, I also added a slight gradation, getting lighter towards the center. Lots of feathers and lots of details, but I love a challenge. Something had been missing and it was bugging me for a long time, and then I realized what I had to do was cool down the shadow areas on the skin. So I added a slight glaze of light blue to Kim's face and hand. It was an extremely fun challenge painting this horned owl, and I can foresee painting owls again. The only thing I would change about the owl here is adding a slight shadow glaze to the bird, maybe make him seem more integrated into the scene. His feet look okay, but there's something about his body against uh, Kim's shoulder there that's not quite true. But I've already submitted the painting to the Kingston Prize, and I won't do any more tweaking. I promise. Probably. And now we take you back to 1996, where on a chilly fall day, Kim and I went down to the Scarborough Bluffs, and we looked around to see what we could shoot for possible future paintings. Uh, that day I shot a couple of rolls of film, yes, film, in a couple of hours, and ultimately I decided to do two paintings, a clean one and a dirty one. Both paintings inspired by the beauty of the cliffs, as well as the no swimming sign and garbage at the site. For this painting, I shot Kimberly later at her place, wearing a swimsuit and uh, putting a toe in the water, testing out its uh, swimming viability. 
I added a heron with some uh, plastic rings from uh, like a six pack of pop cans or beer cans to add to the garbage of the area and that tire on the far left there's a dead fish uh, just underneath the no swimming pole it's kind of weird I think the part where her left foot intersects with the no swimming sign pole is is a weird sort of tangent uh, I would totally recompose this if uh, we're doing it again plus her feet aren't very well drawn this painting is more directly based from one of the photos we took uh, with her standing at the foot of the cliffs and the wind sweeping her hair, the cliffs majestically in the background. Both of these paintings were in a show at Scarborough City Hall the following spring in 97 and the city bought this one. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get a good in focus photo of this one and uh, who knows when I'll be at Scarborough City Hall to get a better picture of it. This painting is based on one of the many photos we took uh, once we returned to her place to shoot the swimsuit photo and a bunch of other things that I eventually turned into paintings. I put the violet daisies in the background to add interest and also to echo the violet in her eye. I was doing people with violet eyes around this time. This one's pretty good. I like the looseness in the flowers, but especially the looseness in her hand. During that photo shoot, Kimberly told me that she could touch the tip of her nose with her tongue, and so I took a couple of pictures in that um, position. Uh, here in the background, I used that stained glass motif, the what my friend Ian called Matrix. The way that I painted those stained glass shapes kind of reminds me of Skittles. The, the, the chroma is really saturated. I don't mind it, but it's very different from the other uh, approaches I had to that motif. For this one I had Kimberly lie on the floor and I shot her um, with the camera at her head and then flipped the image so it looked like she's sort of flying in space. Then I added that, that airliner and superimposed a Supergirl costume onto her to make it look like she's just hanging out in the sky with jets passing by. And now back to 2019. I felt the composition of this painting needed something in the upper right. The negative space was just a little too negative, so I drew a circle there, not knowing how I would deal with it. Eventually, when I blocked in the dark backgrounds, I softened that circle, but I still didn't have any concrete plans about how to deal with it. Much like my portrait of Kimberly with the owl, I needed to cool down part of her face, because the light that was coming in from outside had a bluish tint to it. So I added a little bit of bluish glaze to her uh, left jaw and neck, and then of course also in the coat. Those are a few of the portraits I've painted of my friend Kimberly. I have a few more paintings of Kimberly in mind uh, based on the photos that we took earlier this year, but I just wanted to group these specific portraits together in one video.